Welcome to the Mr. Beacon podcast. My name's Steve Statler of Williot, and I'm back in London. This is kind of cool because the very first person that I interviewed on this series 46 episodes ago was Chris Charles, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Pointer. And so I'm going to be talking to him about three things, a little bit about how their product's evolving, some of their customers, and uh, also we'll just be talking about the industry and how that's changed as well. So Chris, let's start off and just give us like a reminder for the people that didn't see the first episode, what do you guys do at Pointer? So we specialize in deep location, uh, which means that we understand and use uh, micro location data inside venues to do a wide range of things, everything from asset tracking, user tracking, to navigation, to messaging interaction, to do analytics, um, all, all, all sorts of things based on the location. And what are some of the things, we were talking about asset tracking, um, what are the areas where people are looking to track assets, what, what sort of objects? Um, all sorts really, so there's, there's transport operators wanting to help people track their bags um, as security risks grow in transport hubs, um, helping, keep, helping people keep track of their bags is becoming more and more important um, in office environments where you might have um, certain bits of technology that are moving around, definitely in hospitals as well. Um, you get really expensive bits of kit in hospitals that you can lose quite easily or can get put in a room and someone forgets about them. Um, so we're seeing kind of more industrial use cases for, for, for tracking, but with, with, a, with a kind of consumer usage in transport hubs. Very good. Tell us a bit about what's happened to your product in the last year. Uh, so, so our product's clearly evolved quite a lot. Um, every, every new customer that we take on wants to do something slightly different um, and, and as a result our product's got a lot broader, um, lots, of new, lots of new features um, and slight changes in the way things work. Um, integrations with other systems so that um, people can do quite complex um, marketing and push campaigns, people doing really cool analytics with it. Um, people doing lots of tracking, so there's, it's definitely um, broadened significantly in our, in our use case portfolio. And you've added some asset tracking, is that correct? We do a bit of asset tracking. Um, we definitely see it as a big growth area. Um, I think that at the moment with beacons being still fairly expensive per beacon, um, there are only expensive items that you can track, but we, we expect as, as beacons evolve, um, you'll be able to track all sorts of items as, as the prices drop. So let's talk a bit about your customers. Um, things have moved on very well. You've got a lot of publicity around Gatwick Airport. What are they using Pointer for? So Gatwick are really focusing on improving the user experience um, across the airport. They're investing loads into all sorts of new technologies to try and improve the transport journey. Um, and we're seeing that come through as integration with airlines to help uh, people navigate to things, with notifications to help people along their journey, uh, and make sure that people are aware of, of gate changes and all sorts of things to, to help help passengers move through the through the airport really, Very good. efficiently for the airport and efficiently for the for the passenger. And how far have things got in terms of the deployment? Have they got beacons deployed now? Gatwick has full beacon deployment. Um, and, and now it's working on integrations and use cases ready for, ready for the public to start using it. Very cool. And uh, the other customer that is super famous on your site is, is Harrods. Can you say anything about what Harrods are using your product for? Uh, Harrods, Harrods the same really. It's, it's helping people find the things they're looking for in the shop. Um, Harrods is notoriously hard to navigate and easy to get lost in. Um, and wants to provide a, a, a supreme experience for customers. Um, so it's, a, it's a, perfect, a perfect partner to work with. So if I want to like, buy half a dozen frozen quails, which I know they do sell, um, but I don't know where they are. It's a huge store, so presumably I just search for quail and you... you I'm give not sure about searching for quail, that's probably a fairly unique uh, <laughs> search term, but but you could definitely search for the meat counter or the fish counter or whatever and it will take you there. Okay, so it's not product level search, it's kind of... It's product technique. level in some categories. Okay, unless they have a quail department, probably not going to work. <laughs> no, it, 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 can do, it can do some products. It, okay. does, it, it goes to product level in some categories. Uh, cool. And uh, any other customers that you can talk about? 
these things tend to be very sensitive, I realise. Uh, um, I would just say, have a look at our website and uh, we'll, okay. we'll release new information when we can. Okay, very diplomatic. Um, let's just finish off and, and chat a bit about the industry. Uh, um, you know, a year ago, think back to a year ago, what was your view of the industry then and how has it changed in this last year? So I, th I think originally I was very optimistic about the industry. Uh, I still am very optimistic about the industry, but the industry has matured in that process. So there were lots of people looking to do um, all sorts of trials to do different things to try and understand the technology better. Um, what we see has happened is that those trials and investigations have happened. Some have been successful, uh, in which case we're seeing the clients have found very positive results um, and are progressing with the technology. Other trials have been unsuccessful and some customers have, well not necessarily customers, some, some um, industry companies uh, have, have decided to drop the technology because they didn't get the results they were looking for. Um, so understanding of the industry and understanding of beacons has improved greatly, um, but obviously there have been bad experiences along the, along the way um, because people haven't, not everyone has the right technology or the right approach and understanding to deliver a good product. Um, but we do tend to find that after understanding what happened, we're able to provide um, a service that does meet the requirements and therefore we're still seeing a, a very good uplift in people contacting us to say, we tried this before but it didn't work, why, can you help us, what would, what would, what would be different and how would, how, would, how would you make sure that it works? Um, so we're definitely seeing a lot of positivity in the industry, um, even if it starts from a, a failed experience. Are there, are there use cases that you've decided that you thought were kind of going to be very successful that you would steer clear of now and other ones that weren't on your radar that you think are promising? Um, I wouldn't have said that's changed very much. I would have said that the, the biggest change is, or not necessarily change, but the, the biggest thing to focus on is that you're always creating a good user experience. And so long as you're always delivering uh, a great user experience that's helping people, um, then the uptake will be good. If if you don't if you don't get that right, then apps will fail. Um, apps fail every day. Probably hundreds of apps fail every day. Um, and typically, I, I think that that's because they haven't delivered the the right experience for the user. They may be delivering something for the company, um, but unless you get the user experience right, then that's probably the biggest bit of. Yeah, you're dependent on them seeing value and therefore using it. Um, so I'm going to go back to the, the, the kind of this functionality area and maybe ask it in a slightly different way. So if, um, are there kind of areas where people want beacons to do things where you have to kind of re-educate them and say, well, actually it's not going to be that, that's probably not a good thing to do. You should think about this. Uh, so I wouldn't have said that we have to re-educate customers but I would say that typically when we start a relationship there's there is definitely um, a discussion point which is making sure that they have a full understanding of what is possible what isn't possible what's recommended what's not what's industry practice what's not um, and making sure that they are therefore designing and developing a or the best the best um, product possible as opposed to something that they want to do but either the technology doesn't suit or that um, users might not adopt in the same way that they, they would hope to. And so, you know, what, what are your expectations on growth? Do you see steady growth or do you think there's things happening where you're going to see growth really pick up? The point of seeing a, a, a big uplift in, in new customers contacting us, um, it, it's a great cyclical process where the more successful projects and customers that we have, the more, the more people contact us to um, to, to try new things and experiment with the technology again to try and deliver a successful product this time. Um, so we're seeing a, a big uplift in, in projects coming through at the moment. Very good. Mr. Charles, thanks very much for talking with us again. Good to speak to you again. Thanks. Okay, Chris, toughest question of the interview. What are the songs, the three songs that you would take to Mars? Oh, difficult question. Um, 
Uh, I, I would go for genres of music and uh, I couldn't pick an individual song. Right. I'm, I'm a classical man, so I, I would like a, a, I don't know, like a 60s or 80s or, or some nice piano concertos. Uh -huh. uh, and I might go for some more modern chill out music um, if, if I was ready to chill out. If I'm, if I'm alone on Mars, I maybe need to chill out. <laughs> a lot. A lot, yeah. All right. Very good. Thanks a lot.